Hello my friends and welcome back. Do you know what day it is? Yes, it's Friday my friends. You know what that means? That means you survived the week and so did I, thank God. Do you know what didn't? My Patreon. Yes, Patreon deleted my page because of hate speech, violations against the guidelines. I called the Russians the occupiers in Ukraine and that is hate speech. They also blamed me of funding military activity through my Patreon, which is not the case because I've done separate fundraisers through Rotary Club Estonia. And I made a separate video about it yesterday where I explained everything. Anyway, they hurt me real bad. But fortunately, you guys are very supportive and I'll read you a comment from Denis Davidov under my yesterday's video. Patreon cancels lots of our volunteer organizations. It's a popular fundraising platform, but it has lots of content censoring and strict rules. If you send something to ARMY, they would think you also use them for it. One of the Ukrainian funds got 500,000. Whoa! Fuck! Damn! Frozen and totally millions are blocked there. Buy me a coffee is a good alternative. Combat Veteran Reacts also lost his page. Well, thank you, Denis Davidov. You are a true hero of Ukraine and I do watch your videos daily. Also, Brandon Mitchell and I talk and he wrote to me that is the Patreon down and, and it, it's gone. And he had a wonderful idea of me to create a new one, but I cannot create it under my name. So he wanted me to create one under his name. He's of course kidding. He's a, he's a very funny, nice guy. And I'm also talking to Combat Veteran Reacts or Paul. So I am getting help. And thank you, my friends, also for being so supportive. If you would like to support, then buy me a coffee page. I'm building a new community there. It's in the description below. But let's go to Ukrainian news, my friends. I don't want to waste any more of your time. My friends, the first video comes from Kupiansk direction. And after Avdivka's, we cannot call it Russian success. We can just call it Ukrainian fighting retreat. After that, the Russians, for some reason, thought that the Ukrainian front is crumbling and they started pushing for more all five directions. These are Avdivka, Kupiansk, Bakhmut, Robotine, and Marinka, also in the south. So this is the Kupiansk axis, and what we can see here, I'm not gonna play the video just yet. This right here is a Leopard 2 tank. So the newest, the baddest German main battle tank. Well, there are more new modifications, but this is one of the newest. And these black dots right here, these are Russian infantry, and as much as I count, it's about one squad. Now the distance between them is about 20 to 30 meters as I can see. Let's see what happens. Because many people say that main battle tanks are obsolete. Well, they don't have much defense against the drones, small kamikaze drones, but against the infantry, they're irreplaceable. So the main, this is the Russian squad. Yes, trying to strike uh, Kupiansk direction from Kupiansk because supposedly the Ukrainian front is crumbling and let's see how they are met with Ukrainian democracy. The main battle tank aims its barrel. Bada beam, bada boom, yeah. And the shot is so accurate that the tree falls down. What did the tree do? Nothing. The tree was there for free. Why is it destroyed suddenly? But what you gonna do? Another shot. And the piggies are right here as you can see. And another one, yes. Three shots, it fires point blank range. Russians are running. Now, I, I call them piggies right now. I, get, I don't know if this is hate speech. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Please don't delete my YouTube channel. My friends, but now I do want to bring you a video translated by Dimitri or war translated. These are Russian servicemen filming their own artillery crews being hit by FPV drones. And it really illustrates the Russian mindset on the front and the Russian mindset in general. See, if Western soldiers would be filming this very same video, they'd be crying, screaming, or they would call this a tragedy. But when the Russians film it, let's see what happens. This is a Russian artillery position, by the way. Their own artillery men are filming their own artillery positions. It must be looking at how to approach. Oh, it's coming. So they're talking about a Ukrainian kamikaze drone that was circling their own artillery position. Bashol, boom. And did you hear, hell yeah. Did you hear the bang? See, it was a very, on a camera, it looked like a, you know, small, almost like a hand grenade explosion. Of course, it was a lot bigger, but the, Sound was, you know, pretty low and loud, low and loud. 
If we see these kamikaze drone footages from a recon drone up there, we just see this explosion and we don't hear the sound. The sound on the ground actually is pretty terrifying. It makes a, a, a big of a kaboom, low, it goes through your bones. If you have stood close to artillery, what, whichever one, 81, 120, 150, doesn't matter. You know the vibration, the whole earth goes. This is similar, just wanted to illustrate what we never feel through a video. And this is their own position, and they're like, hell yeah! yeah but. You bought Suga! What's there? A cannon! There's loads of them there. So they're like, oh, there's loads of our cannons, they just hit them, they don't care at all. <laughs> For them, cannons are, uh, how it is, material that like, wastes away your... <laughs> how it is called in English, if you're a company and you have these materials that you have to change all the time, it's like... I don't, my English is, is an issue here. Well, anyway, it's material to be replaced as well as people. If there were people right here, they would still laugh the same way. This is how kamikaze drones work. Thank you for explaining, Mr. Russian. Did you film it? Yes. Send it to me, and to me as well. They're more interested in getting the video than about the loss of their cannons, because Putya will send more cannons. So yeah, lads, conceal your guns and protect with nets. Uh, guns, it means artillery, like put ar uh, anti-kamikaze drone nets uh, on top of your artillery. Although this is what a D-30 howitzer, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, this is, I don't want to sound cocky here, but this is Soviet crap. It's in precise and Estonia sent all of the D-30s that we had before the full-scale invasion started. We sent everything, so... We knew this is this has no place in the modern battlefield if you don't have shit loads of shells. Because yes, this weapon does kill, does shoot, but it's so imprecise that it, its beauty comes into effect if you have a lot of these weapons and a lot of shells to fire through them. Now, any Western country doesn't have either of these things. So does Ukraine, either of these things. They have these weapons, but they don't have a lot of shells. And if you have little, small amount of shells, you don't want to use them on D-30s because they're imprecise. So, yeah, no one got hurt. It's smashed. They're trying to shoot down a kamikaze drone now. Oh, another one coming. Uh, I, I apologize, I paused so much, but there's so much to comment here. Now, shooting down a kamikaze drone with the small arms fire, it is possible. But your percentage to hit it is really only in the last like 5 to 10 seconds it's coming your way. Then it gets bigger and bigger. And then the percentage to hit it is really small because it's moving fast. And it is small and it's a dot and suddenly it's in your face and you're kaboom, knocked out cold. So small arms fire versus kamikaze drone, small kamikaze drone. If you're really lucky you shoot it down. But usually I would just say no, not possible, no, no way. But it's fun to shoot at them. It's coming here. See, this is this is the one. It's diving. Boom. Hit it. And this bang you just heard, this is the same smallest comic cartridge on that we give to Alpha Group, that I give to your fundraisers, you know. You hear, it's far away. The bang it was like one and a half seconds, so what, one, one kilometer or less is the distance. It was still quite loud, and these are the very same kamikaze drones that hunt infantry, so I don't think you would want to be standing next to it. And they also hunt one man at a time, like, poof, one gun, one gun, that's what they do. These ones are having a laugh, honestly, oh, kamikaze drone, look at that, shoot it down, it's too far away, ah, it's over, ah, our cannons are done, nobody was hurt, ah, another one. Maybe they're drunk, maybe they're drugged, maybe they're just Russians. My friends, now I bring you once again Anton Heroshenko. I really like his analytical tweets because he, in a short way, outlines a lot of issues and a lot of topics. And this time he outlines to us what is Putin's plan. And since I do agree with what he says is the Putin's plan, I want to read it to you. Let's go through point by point if this part of the Putin's plan has already been effective or not. So we get the overlying idea of where is Putin in his to-do list, bucket list of the world, let's call it that. What is Putin's plan? Destroy Ukrainian independence and turn 
us into Belarus. Now this plan started in 2014 and it didn't work back then. Ukrainians pushed back also the rebels in Donbass, so Russia had to send in army and still didn't work. Ten years of fighting, still Ukraine was able to push them back. It didn't work in 2022, 24th of February, where Russia sent in almost 200,000 men to take over the country. Ukraine pushed them back. And it hasn't worked with any Russian counteroffensive or offensive, let's call it an offensive, ever since. So the plan has not worked and it will not work. I don't see Russia winning the way me and other volunteers who have uh, wonderful supporters like you, the way we are working for Ukraine, going there and making these fundraisers, and the way you have been supporting. I've spoken to people in Canada, US and the rest of the world. The mindset is, let's support Ukraine. With this mindset, I don't see Russians winning. So, in my eyes, this worst one already failed for Putin. He will never get this check on this bucket list point. Number two, destroy the Russian opposition completely and not allow leaders like Nemtsov to appear. Now, this point, I gotta admit, he has done effectively and successfully. First of all, Prigozhin. Uh, until he had a falling out, he went to Moscow, it was little shenanigans, the poker gamble, then he stopped all of that, then he spent a little time in Africa and a few months later, boom, he's gone. Then we have Navalny, did all his shenanigans, opposition, the biggest opposition leader, millions of people in the street for Navalny protest, then he was poisoned, he didn't die, then he went back to Russia, put into jail, he was in jail for what, one and a half years or one year, then boom, he died. Now we have Kirkin, put into jail, uh, six months ago, even more, he's next, mark my words, he's next in a few months. Putin's clock ticks in three months. So now it was Navalny, three, four months later it's going to be Kirkin. And there are no other opposition leaders at all right now. So Putin has effectively destroyed all Russian opposition and this bucket list point is a check for him. Restore the USSR in 1991 borders. <coughs> Now this, but I don't even need to explain. No check at all, never going to be. USSR, meaning Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland, hate Russian mindset, debil mindset, the Soviet culture and mindset and are willing to die for the fact that they will never be back under the Soviet Union. So this will not be possible without a huge fight that Russia will lose. So no check and not ever is this going to be a check. Bring pro-Russian government to power in Central European countries based on Hungarian model. Mainly this concerns Slovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Montenegro and Poland. Now this is a grey area. This is a very dangerous point, my friends. Because in Hungary, of course, Viktor Orban gave way and they're going to ratify Swedish succession into NATO and they're also gave way to the 50 billion aid packet from the EU to Ukraine. But thing is, Orban is very Putin sympathetic for some reason. I, he just personally likes Putin or likes the very fake macho strongman image, whatever it is about him. I think in Putin's mindset, spreading the Russian world virus has been positive in Hungary. It has been positive in one more European country, Slovakia. We're not there in Poland, we're not there in Montenegro or Romania. But this is a grey area. I don't say this is a failure for Putin because he has agents in Europe. And definitely before the war, he had all of Europe in his palm. So in a way, if you would have asked me before one year ago, um, Putin had just lost uh, the entire European Union as a gas customer, an oil customer. This would have been a failure, but now we're seeing pro-Russian sentiment creep back into Europe and into European parliaments. So I'm going to say this is a grey area, 50-50 right now. He definitely has the possibility. Weaken and destroy NATO. Now this is a funny one, my friends. Putin's worst nightmare. He wakes up at night with cold sweats like, oh, NATO is expanding. This is the worst thing for him now after the fall of the Soviet Union. Now his goal in Ukraine 2022, 24th of February, was to stop the expansion of NATO, A, and to take Ukraine back under the Russian puppet state. Now what happened? Ukraine was pushed even more into the NATO's and European Union's mindset and Sweden and Finland, two countries that are, I'm not going to call them neutral, they're quite anti-Russia, but they played the neutral game 
are pushed into NATO immediately only by Putin's aggressive foreign policy and the warmongering. So Putin himself took a handgun, cocked it back and is like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna shoot myself in the leg. Bam! And Sweden and Finland are in NATO, because Finland already is, and Sweden will be ratified by Hungary very soon. If they won't now, they will be later, they will be in NATO. So Baltic Sea, home of the Russian Baltic fleet, is going to be NATO's internal sea. So as soon as the fleet leaves the harbor in any kind of war scenario, it will be drowned and sunk in its entirety. The Baltic fleet is effectively trapped in Kaliningrad or in St. Petersburg destabilize and weaken USA. Now, I know a lot of people might not agree with this. And I, I also want to say this point. If you're from the USA, I'll say this again. Uh, any European who points fingers or any Ukrainian who points fingers at you for being a traitor or not supporting Ukraine now, don't listen to it. Only thing you should get out of it is thank you. The gratefulness you have done so much for Europe. You have done so much for Ukraine. It's time for European leaders to wake up. Now, I am all for United States support for Ukraine, but I know we cannot be babysat like we have been before. European leaders need to wake up, and this is a good wake-up call that the United States has this internal strife right now. Because European leaders, they need some balls. So, thank you, USA, what you have done. Destabilizing week in the US, as much as I look at the US economy right now, as much as I look at the inflation in the United States. I know you're not going to agree with me, but the United States is doing good. If you look at the numbers, you don't look at the homelessness, you don't look at the border issue, you just look at the sheer numbers of GDP, joblessness and stuff like that. According to these numbers and inflation, the United States economy is doing damn well. So in my eyes, this is not check for Putin. Of course, if you don't agree with any of these points with me, put it in the comments. This is not pure truth here. I am open to change my mind if I read something and it educates me. Now, my friends, something that Budanov, the intelligence chief of Ukraine, reported about a week, week and a half ago, and I'm very sad to see this. Russian military reporter is fundraising for two Starlings. In his post, he reveals the cost of the both units plus six month subscription at 219,000 rubles, which is about 1,900 pounds. Basic hardware and the cheapest plan cost. 1,348 pounds in the UK, so they're overpaying about 40%. Now, the issue is not the fact that they are overpaying. That doesn't mean nothing to Elon Musk or the Russians. They will get the money, but they will pay for it if necessary. The issue here is that Russians have an ability and will to use Starlink, as there is no alternative to Starlink right now in Ukraine or in Russia. It is the most widely available and cheapest option for any drone crews out there, and Ukrainians are using the hell out of it. They have been. Almost any drone offensive operation we see in Ukraine is using Starlink. Almost all of them. Very rarely we have some other technology. And it's not OPSEC information. Everybody knows this. If you don't know this, then you just not educated about this. It's not secret. Ukrainians rely very heavily on Starlink. But the fact that Russians are now using it, that Pudanov stated this, and now we see Russian military bloggers fundraising for Starlink, very big issue. It's a very big weapon, Starlink, huge weapon. And in Russia's hands, it's all under Elon Musk's control. Now, if he's willing to sell that to the Russians. Again, I don't want to point any fingers. This is not what I do on this channel. I want to focus on aiding Ukraine. But I would just say I would not do this with my ideals. That's all I can say. I would not let the Russians use this. My friends, time to give credit where credit is due. United Kingdom to provide Ukraine with 200 more brimstone missiles. Now, United Kingdom is the European countries, the top leader in training Ukrainian troops and sending weapons. They were the first to send the storm shadow. They were the first to announce that they're going to be training 10,000 Ukrainian troops at a time, and then another 10, another 10, and they're going to train 10,000 also in the beginning of 2024, this year. And they're sending now these 200 brimstone missiles, and they have sent so much more. The Challenger tanks and, and a lot of hundreds of United Kingdom's military drones, they're doing so much. So I just want to give credit. And I'll be doing that in every video now. Ever since the United States support is uh, wavering, again, not blaming, not pointing fingers, just saying that now we need to give credit to European countries and countries all over the world that help Ukraine. Thank you, UK. Thank you, Denmark, for sending all of their art artillery pieces and munitions to Ukraine. 
thank you, Sweden, for the 500 million care package sent to Ukraine. We need to wake up in Europe. There's no U.S. coming to help us out. This is our war, our fight, our continent. Time to act is now. My friends, and connecting to the previous topic, if time to act is now, if we don't act, this is the outcome. This is our Divka's coke plant, the coal mine, uh, coal processing plant that was overrun by the Russians and the fighting retreat was pulled by the Ukrainians. Now, this plant hold up the Russian offenses for six months. For six months, you can see the fields. This is what eastern and southern Ukraine looks like. Settlement, little forest strips, and fields upon fields surrounding them. Now, striking these uh, positions like that, it's very difficult for the Russians because you have to cross an open field for one and a half to two kilometers before you reach any kind of Ukrainian positions, and you're all in the firing sector at the time you're crossing. So this is what happened. Now this plant is under Russian occupation. But this plant and the positions in this plant enabled Ukrainian troops to destroy tens of thousands of Russian soldiers. I'm talking ca uh, casualties, meaning wounded and KIA together. Insane position, very defendable, and uh, Ukrainians did a great job on this. Now, if any Russian comments or pro-Russian people in the West are saying, oh, but Ukraine lost the coke plant. What are you talking about? You, you are in delusions, my friend. They're losing ground. Check this out, my friend. Hey, I, don't leave. Don't, Mr. Pro-Russian person, don't leave. Let's talk uh, friendly here. I'm not here to blindly bash anybody's uh, opinions. This is Avdivka, and this is the coke plant. You're right that Ukraine lost. Uh, it's all together, this area right here, cost Russians about 17,000 dead, almost 1,000 armored vehicles exterminated, and a lot more wounded. This is about 10 to 15 square kilometers or 7 square miles. Now we zoom out. Look how big this is. Now we zoom back in. This, where my cursor is, I'm sorry that you cannot see it, it's not on this map, but this here is a Ukrainian Surovikin line. They have built it out in the last two years. It's about 10, 15 kilometers back from Avdivka and from every front line right now. It goes in eastern Ukraine. It has three defensive lines like Surovikhi line in depth after every five kilometers. They have one bunker every one kilometer. There's another bunker that has 360 degrees coverage of firing sectors. And they're on the hills, on the high grounds. Ukrainian designers or builders are not stupid. They're putting in the best positions. Again, like Avdivka, fields upon fields and then a bunker on a mountain. How are you going to strike this? So this was one out of 100 defensive positions that Ukraine has. So... Yes, Ukrainians had to pull out, but this Ukrainian defensive line, they haven't, Russians haven't even reached it. And this is insanely long and insanely well defended. So if any pro-Russian person says right now, okay, now the Russians are going to push through. My friend, these losses are not sustainable, not for Russia, even not for China. In these numbers, if you compare it, to what would it take to take these bunkers? Even China wouldn't have that manpower. Putin knows this, and for this very reason, they're executing their military bloggers like Murs, who shot himself in the back of the head for some reason, after publishing Russian losses in Avdivka. Russian information inside immediately was killed because they have to hide the losses because they know if the West finds really out about the losses in Ukraine, then they know that we're screwed. The Russians are screwed. They cannot keep doing this. It's not possible. Now, my friends, here you will see a Russian trench line. Look how long it is. But it's not the trench line that I want to illustrate here. Look, this is artillery shells all along. It's like a moon surface, bombarded to oblivion. No trees left. And do you notice something? No trees, no mountains here, just a trench line uh, and open fields. So this is Russian trench line. Very difficult attack for Ukrainians. But the Ukrainian trench lines are the same. And the Ukrainian Suroviki line is three of these trench lines in the depth. And they have, on the high grounds, they have 45 bunkers, 45 firing sectors. So Russians to take this, it's very difficult. And they are long. They go for hundreds of kilometers. And now we go to the other side also. And it's very creepy of how long this is actually. Clearing this out with tanks or infantry, it's almost impossible. You need a lot of artillery and drones to clear this out. My friend, when I was in Ottawa uh, or Ontario in Canada, we were picked up from the city by Heiner, a very genius engineer who is working together with the Ukrainians. Uh, we worked together also, and he showed us his place, his guns. He has a lot of guns. Yeah, 
I don't know why I went Texan for a moment. He's Canadian, but he has a lot of guns. He wore the cowboy hat. We shot all of their guns. He's helping Ukrainian families. He's paying his own money in tens of thousands to help Ukrainian families in, in, in Canada, acco accommodating them, paying the bills and everything. So he's truly an uh, unrecognized hero for Ukraine, Heiner. And uh, he also had a drone up above when we were shooting all the weapons. So you can see the drone footage while I'm talking about this. Very awesome dude, awesome guy, and right now also doing a lot for Ukraine and some of the projects I actually cannot name. So let's all please appreciate men like Heiner in the comments below for doing their selfless work for Ukrainian refugees. These are not flashy drones. These are not tanks or munitions. These are women and children who need help and money. And Heiner is providing that. So thank you, Heiner, for doing what you do. Also, my friends, thank you for sticking through this week. It was a tough week because my Patreon went, I'm alive, I'm well, I'm thankful. Thank you for you. And until my next video, which will be on Monday, be back. Slava Ukraini, my friends, and bye-bye.